I want to talk about pine. When people go and buy timber, unless you're sort of really clued up on it, when they go and buy uh, pine timber, they just think pine is pine, there's one type of pine. And that's not the case, there's quite a few different variations of pine. You've got your qualities and your um, sort of quality standards, like unsorted and fifths and things like that, but a lot of people don't understand that because it's more for the tradespeople. But one thing you can look out for when you're buying pine is the different types of pine. So I'm just going to, I've got three a year that um, probably the three most recognisable and probably the most used pines. So the first one is what's classed as redwood pine. So that's that one. It's basically just normal pine like you'd see uh, if you went to um, a timber merchant and asked for a, know, a piece of 3x3 uh, plane or something like that, then it's quite possibly it, it'll be this stuff. It'll be redwood pine. Now, the dark bits you can see in the grain here is sap. So this wood, it can chew your sanding discs up when you're sanding because it's got quite a lot of sap content. Moisture content in this sort of pine, you're probably looking about 19, 20%, something like that. So it is quite heavy. I mean, this is a big lump, it's 63, but it is quite an heavy wood. And um, as I say, because it's got a lot of moisture and a lot of sap inside it, it will tend to chew your sanding discs up if you start sanding it with a sander. Um, it, it's quite a supple wood because it's got a greater moisture content. It's not too brittle, so it's quite um, quite soft when you're sort of screwing it and nailing it. So um, it is quite versatile for woodwork. Um, but the only problem with this having a higher moisture content is it can move, and because it's pine. Of course, if somebody puts it near a heat source or indirect sunlight or something, then it, it, it is more likely to move. So that's one thing to consider. Um, it, it can be used outside if you treat it well. Um, a lot of your decking and things like that are probably made out of this before it's pressure treated. Um, so that's basically the redwood pine. So from redwood pine, we're going to move on to this next one, which is... Canadian pine or yellow pine. Now, as you can see, this is a lot lighter in colour. It's not so dark. I mean, the plain side, as you can see there, it's, it's very light. Uh, it's, it's known basically as uh, Canadian yellow pine or just Canadian pine. This stuff has got a really low moisture content. So you're right down to sort of 8 to 9% moisture content instead of uh, nearly 20 with the redwood pine. So that means that this wood is very good for uh, things like furniture and things where you don't want hardly any movement if you can help it because you don't want to um, make a door for a cabinet and then it shrinks and you end up with massive shut lines around the uh, door. So it's, it's, it's a very good um, timber for furniture and things like that. It's not very good for outside because it's so dry you will find it'll just suck moisture in like a sponge um, because the, there's not much moisture in it so it just will attract moisture from outside so it's not really ideal to use it outside and I wouldn't recommend it for outdoor use but for anything like making rustic furniture or making pine furniture it's brilliant a lot of the pine furniture manufacturers will use it and because it's such a big tree when it's grown it'll come in these wide this is a 12 inch plank I mean, this is an inch plank, but it also comes in two inch, three inch planks. So um, it's, it's really nice if you want a big wide board. So that's Canadian pine or Canadian yellow pine. And finally, the last one I want to show you is this stuff. Now, this is called white pine or white wood. This stuff, well, it's horrible. <laughs> it's... It's probably the lowest of the low of pines. It's horrible. As you can see, it's, it's warping. It's, it's not very nice wood. It's, it's about the same as the redwood in moisture content, but as you can hear, it's very brittle. It's very hard. Um, you will get, um, you can see what, yeah, you, you, you can see the knots in this stuff. You will get these cracks in the knots. You can see that. 
And the knots tend to be really black and dark and you will get uh, dead knots dropping out of it and things. And if I get white wood, I tend to put it through the thickness. So it comes out the other end and half the wood's missing because it, it spelches and it chips and the knots fly out. And it's just a not very nice wood to work with. So I wouldn't recommend using white wood unless you're forced because it's just, unless you get it really cheap and you, it's where your budget needs to be for a project, I wouldn't use white wood. It's, it's just horrible. And that's another problem we've ever seen there. You get these sap pockets, which is like a cut in the wood, a natural cut. And what you'll get, you can't see it on here, but there's sap leaking out of this and you can sand it off and then you can finish your project and when the customer comes to pick your project up or you go out on site to fit it you'll find the saps leaking out again and it's just a common problem and then you get it people you know your customers will get it on the clothes and things and start moaning so i'd steer well clear of this stuff it's it's horrible it's just it's a, it's a nasty pine and this is what i think this wood is the one that gives pine a bad name because people think oh you know it's it's rubbish pine i don't want to use pine it's it's no good but if you use the Canadian yellow pine um, or even the redwood pine in the right situation, it's, uh, there are, you know, they are quite decent to use. Uh, this is another common problem with pine. Now this can happen with the redwood or the white wood uh, and that's bluing, blue staining. You see that and that's, that's water damage, that is basically. So if you see any of that on wood, be very careful unless you're getting it really cheap and it's, you know, it doesn't really matter, I'd steer well clear. If anybody tries to give you any wood with a blue staining like that, then don't bother with it. Throw it back at them because that's water damage. And basically what that means is water is penetrated into that wood and you'll probably find it's already starting to decay and rot inside the wood. So if you do see any blue, bluing like that on the wood, uh, just, Try and swap it or stay well clear of it um because it's quite possible it might cause you problems down the line it just doesn't look very nice either so even if it's uh, you know even if it doesn't decay anymore it, if you're finishing a product and you're going to stain it or anything it's it's not very nice it's horrible so there are your uh, three main types of pine if you need any more advice about wood or any type then uh, drop me a comment in the uh, comments but uh, I hope that's uh, helped you out and uh, I hope that uh, saves you a bit of heartache when you're using pine. So it's not a bad wood. It's a good wood to work with. If you don't want to use a hard wood or if your budget means you can't use a hard wood, then pine's fine if you use the right sort of pine. So if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe and follow, and I'll see you on the next video.